Hi everyone, I'm Janisha Anand. I'm the Senior Product Manager for AI Platforms. Today we'll be talking over about SageMaker Autopilot, its capabilities, and how to create an AutoML experiment with Autopilot. So let's get started. As you know, there are various challenges when you're building and training machine learning models. Building machine learning models is a very, very time consuming and a resource of intensive tasks. It entails to preparing features, doing feature engineering, running multiple algorithms on it, and then fine tuning it using various hyperparameters. To say the least, you have to build and operate the machine learning infrastructure as well. And it, this needs a lot of experience and a lot of seasoned data scientists. And that is where AutoML comes in place. Autopilot is a low code tool for building, training, and tuning machine learning models. All you have to do is upload your tabular data to S3 to train your models and select your target column. And Autopilot picks it up from there. It does the automatic feature engineering and feature tra transforms for you. It selects the algorithms for you, trains your models, finds the best parameters, tunes them, and then provides you with a stack rank list of models created for you. It also provides you with an explainability report and performance insights about the models that are created. It offers you controls as well as, as visibility into your machine learning models. With that, let's get started with what the experience of building an autopilot experiment actually looks like. The first and foremost thing is to upload the tabular data. Um, and so here, if you see that you can connect to S3 data sources, we support various formats, CSV format and Parquet format. You get the ability to preview your data and also modify this with Data Wrangler in case you want to eliminate certain columns break certain columns into composite features, apply certain transforms of your own. You can then uh, do a custom split or an auto split with autopilot and also auto create your output location. In the next screen, you get the option of selecting features and selecting your target. By default, all features are selected for you. The only thing that you are mandated to and required to put in here is the target column that you need to select for your experiment. You also have the ability in feature selection to change the data type, the auto infer data type that was inferred by Autopilot in the first place. So if suppose the data type was inferred as text and you want to change this to numeric, you can absolutely do that. The next part would be to select the training method. Autopilot offers three types of training methods. The first one is an auto mode where autopilot automatically determines which training method or training engine should it expose your data set to. This could be an HPO method, or it could be, which is hyperparameter tuning, or it could be an ensemble training method. If your data set is less than 100 MB, autopilot automatically picks up the ensemble training method. And if your data set is greater than 100 MB, autopilot picks up hyperparameter optimization. Other than the auto uh, training method, we also have two other manual training methods, which is the ensemble method and the hyperparameter optimization method. The ensemble method is powered by auto gluon. It uses the technique of ensembling with stacking under the hood. Ensemble offers eight algorithms. It offers light GBM, CAD boost, XGBoost, random trees, extra trees, linear models, and neural network models that by PyTorch and FastAI. We recommend ensemble training method for data set sizes that are less than 100 MB. For data set sizes that are greater than 100 MB, we recommend customers to use the HPO method. HPO method uses the Bayesian optimization search algorithm to find a range of hyperparameters and run multiple trials for you. By default, the HPO method runs 100 trials, but you can dial up and dial down the number of trials based on your requirements. These are the performance benchmarks for the ensemble training mode. We've seen that the ensemble training mode runs close to around eight times faster than the HPO mode with 250 trials and around 6x faster than an HPO mode of 100 trials for a data set size that is less than one. The ensemble mode offers faster runtime than the HPO mode 
for data set sizes um, less than 100 MB. As you can see in the screen, that the ensemble mode is 8x faster than an HPO mode with 250 trials and around 6x faster than an HPO mode of 100 trials. This does not mean that it compromises on accuracy. In most of the cases, we have seen that the ensemble mode performs close to, has higher accuracy, close to around 1.9% higher than the HPO mode. Once you've selected your training methods, the last screen that you have is the deployment and advanced settings screen, wherein you can either auto deploy, you can choose to auto deploy your machine learning models, wherein we would be deploying the best candidate for you, or you can turn it off and do a deployment of your models once your model is trained. If you go into advanced settings, you can select the problem type. If you don't select the problem type, then autopilot automatically detects the problem type based on the data that you've uploaded. The problem types that Autopilot supports are regression, binary classification, and monthly class classification. We also support time series data sets, but the problem type that we support is a time series classification one. You have the choice of running your experiment in either pilot mode or complete mode. Pilot mode would essentially mean that we are doing a dry run of your Autopilot experiment, wherein we are not running the experiment end to end. All we are doing is we are generating the data exploration notebook and the candidate generation notebook. A complete experiment would entail to running the experiment end to end and would spin up SageMaker training jobs under the hood. Once you have created your experiment, the experiment launches and it performs all the necessary tasks for your machine learning models for you, which entails to automatic data pre-processing, feature engineering, automatic model selection. It creates a leaderboard for you. It creates a feature importance report which explains the uh, features of the model. Please note that candidate generation notebook is only available for the HPO training mode. It is not currently available for the ensemble training mode. Let's now look into what does the what, what does autopilot create for you once it has finished its training. This is a representation of how the leaderboard in the model leaderboard in Autopilot looks like. If you see that all the all the trials or all the candidate models that candidate models that were generated by Autopilot are stacked ranked with the best model being on the top. All the objective matrices for that particular problem type are captured and listed out as well. On the top, you have two options. One is to open the candidate generation notebook and the other one is to open the data exploration notebook. We'll, we'll go through what exactly both of these things mean. You have the ability, if you've not chosen the auto deploy option, you have the ability to deploy your model with a single click option and it will deploy it to an endpoint for you, therefore making it ready for a real time inference. This is a leaderboard of an ensemble training model wherein you have 10 trials generated, uh, 10 candidates generated, with again, the best model being the top model that is there. If you see, this is a weighted ensemble model for you. Similar to what you saw in the previous screen, where the leaderboard was that for an HPO uh, training mode. This has objective matrices uh, for every model as well. You can click on uh, the view model details to understand the details about that model. And we'll look into that in a quick bit. This is the model details page. The model details page has four tabs, the explainability, performance, artifacts, and network. What we see out here is the explainability tag, tab. The first part in the explainability tab is the features importance section. The feature importance section reviews the plot of aggregated shaft values, indicating the importance of each and every feature. You also get a summary of statistics under this, which is under the metric section which gives you the statistics for objective matrices, your F1 values for both your training and validation um, data sets. You can also review a list of hyperparameters that were used to train and tune your models. And then you have the ability of downloading your feature reports. In this screen, you will see that we, uh, we are showcasing the performance tab. The performance tab here showcases the performance matrices on your validation data set. You can also review the confusion matrix for the classification problem types that you may have. And you have the ability of downloading your performance reports as well. 
In the third tab, which is the artifacts tab, you get access to all the artifacts, which includes your input data, your shuffled training and validation splits, your feature engineering code, your feature engineering models, your model artifacts, and all the explainability artifacts that we talked about previously. We talked about this briefly earlier, that you have the ability to do a one-click deployment of your model to a SageMaker endpoint for real-time predictions. And if you do not wish to do a real-time inference or real-time prediction, you have the ability of doing batch predictions by running a SageMaker batch transform job. Let's now look into what the candidate generation notebook and what the data exploration notebook offer. You have full, full with autopilot, you have full visibility and control with all these with both these generated notebooks. A data exploration notebook essentially describes what autopilot has learned about your data that you provided it. A candidate generation notebook uses this information about the data to generate the candidates. And we'll, we'll take a look as to how a candidate generation notebook looks like in detail when we are doing the demo. And then the last report is a model insights report, which is the performance tab, which in, and contains the performance characteristics of every uh, of the best model in the leaderboard for your autopilot experiment. This is what a data exploration notebook look like, looks like. If I click on it, the data exploration notebook essentially contains a data set summary, the target analysis, a sample of the data. It finds out whether you had duplicate rows, what are the cross column correlations. So it essentially does a Pearson correlation analysis. It also finds out what are the anomalous rows that are there, any missing values and what the cardinality is it, and also gives you a descriptive statistics of the data set that you've uploaded. This is the time it actually gives you the opportunity to improve the quality of your data before you start training it. The candidate definition notebook contains all the suggested pre-processing steps that Autopilot took. It also lists out all the algorithms that were chosen and selected for you and the range of hyperparameters. It provides you details of how these candidates were generated. You can refine these notebooks as you desire and then recreate this model from the notebook at any point in the future. Once you, if, if you choose to customize the hyperparameters within your candidate definition notebook, you can essentially run the notebook in SageMaker notebooks as um, it's, it's a fully runnable uh, code. The next visibility option that you have in Autopilot is the Model Insights Report. It's essentially the performance tab for your best model, wherein you get details and insights about the quality information of the model candidates that were generated. It provides you all, all your false positives and false negatives, your trade-offs between true positives and false positives, trade-offs between precision and recall. Confu you get your confusion matrices, your precision and recall curves, your ROC curves in your model insights report. Autopilot now offers integration with Data Wrangler as well. What this means is that your journey to create a machine learning model can either start directly from Autopilot or can start from Data Wrangler. Let's start about the first use case. If your machine learning journey is starting from Autopilot, when you upload your data with the preview uh, and you preview your data, you, ha you have the ability of bringing in your own feature transforms. So when you are uploading your data into Autopilot, you have the ability to go back into Data Wrangler and create a data flow, apply your feature engineering data processing steps, and bring the data back into Autopilot. And if your journey is starting from Data Wrangler, then you will essentially upload your data into Data Wrangler, create your entire data flow, which contains all the changes to your data type, all your transformations, and then you would click on Train Model. Once you click on Train Model, this would launch an autopilot experiment for you along with all the transformations that you have applied. A lot of customers like this feature and the reason for that is because Data Wrangler itself offers close to around 300 plus pre-configured transforms uh, that you can leverage to prepare your data. Autopilot will respect the feature transformations that um, are applied from Data Wrangler and would use those feature transformations for its subsequent downstream steps. 
this is a screen of what um, your if you click on once you click on training this would showcase this will actually show you the s3 location which would be used that uh, uh, s3 location for your data set that would be used to create the autopilot experiment autopilot is generally available it is available in all the SageMaker regions wherever SageMaker studio is and it is priced per instance used now we will switch to the demo for autopilot just wanting to go through the data set um, of the demo. We are going to use the auto insurance claim data set here. It is around 4.9 GB with 21 columns and around 42,000 rows. This data set combines the raw data from the claims table and the customers table. The target column is a fraud column and the problem type that we problem type is a binary classification and the problem statement that we want to solve for is that we want to find out whether the insurance claim is fraudulent or not. So with that, let's get started. I'm here in SageMaker. And I will go into Studio. I will open one of my user profiles that I've already pre-created within Studio and then launch it. Let's take a look at the data set, the bank, um, the bank of additional full CSV file. It's open here. It has various columns, 21 columns. The first few columns are customer related details about his age, job, his marital status, the education. The next few columns are whether he has a house, whether he's taken a loan or not. Um, what are the mechanisms to contact him with? And um, the employment, the employed, uh, employee variation rate, the price index, and various other uh, um, attributes related to claims. Let's go ahead and train our machine learning model with autopilot. I'm clicking on create autopilot experiment. The first screen that you see here is the experiments and details page. Let's go ahead and select our S3 input data. Here you can see a preview of the data as well. We will, for this demo, ignore um, creating a manifest file as the input data. But essentially, you can if you have multiple files in your S3 that you want to um, provide. So you can provide a manifest file with the location, and then uh, it will take all the input data from that uh, location. We are also going to uh, avoid doing a custom split. But essentially, uh, you can specify your own custom split in autopilot, or you can upload your own validation data set if you have that. Let's go ahead and use the auto data split here, which is an 80-20 split that autopilot automatically does. We'll also go ahead and select our S3 location for our output, where the output artifacts will be. I'm gonna go ahead and click on next which will take me to the targets and features screen. Here I have to select my target column. My target column is the fraud column, which means whether a fraud happened or not. It has two values in it, false, uh, yes or a no. For this um, demo, I am going to accept all the features that Autopilot has um, selected. But I do have the ability of deselecting certain set of features and changing the data types if I wish to. So let's leave the features the way they are. And let's see, uh, let's provide all the features to this um, experiment and see uh, what autopilot reduces in terms of feature importance. Next, I go ahead and select my training method. As I mentioned earlier, 
Autopilot has three training methods. One of them is an automatic one, where an autopilot automatically determines which training mode to use based on your data set size. And the other two ones are where you can specify which training method you want to use. Um, in this demo, we are going to use the ensemble training method. The ensemble training method will automatically run the training job on all the eight algorithms. It will run multiple trials and we'll talk about what these trials look like uh, after, we've see, after we see an experiment run. The last screen is the deployment and advanced settings screen. I'm gonna auto deploy this model and create an endpoint automatically after that, after the model completes. In the advanced settings, I'm gonna leave it the way it is we let autopilot determine what problem type it is. You have the option of choosing the problem type if you want to specify it explicitly. You also have the option of specifying runtime, which in wherein you can cap the trial time and your job runtime. Um, you can provide the access encryption and security parameters here as well. You can also apply tags to your autopilot experiment. And this is specifically beneficial if you want to understand what is the cost associated with your autopilot job. Let's go ahead and review this and create our experiment. So if you see, this is the launcher screen here, wherein Autopilot is automatically training the models for you. It is doing the feature engineering for you behind the hood. It will select the algorithms for you and will create the uh, data insights, the model insights report, and then ultimately deploy the model. We will not we will not wait here to let this job finish. I actually have two jobs, two autopilot experiments, one with the ensemble mode and one with HPO mode already completed. So let's go ahead and review what the results look like. Here I have opened up an autopilot experiment which was run in the ensemble mode. This was similar to what we actually launched a few seconds back. If you see that the problem type is binary classification, it has automatically deployed the endpoint for us. And if you see in the model leaderboard, we have 10 trials that ran by, that were run by autopilot and they are stacked ranked, which means that the best model is ranked on the top. And the best model is the one that has the best objective matrices and the objective metric that we were training for. Binary classification models get the, the by default, the objective metric taken for binary classification models is an F1 score. Let's go ahead and look at this, the model details. The model details tells us that the algorithm was a weighted ensemble one. So let's see what were the algorithms that were taken within these this weighted ensemble model that was created. If you see the best model took these algorithms under the hood, it took the XGBoost, the light GBM, CAD boost, neural network fast AI, neural network torch, the linear models, random forest and extra T's, and created a weighted ensemble with this um, and ranked this as the best model. The first thing that we see out here is the feature importance. The feature importance is the sharp values for all the features and tells you the relevance of these features for your machine learning model. We see out here that the duration and the employment employee variation rate, um, employment variation rate were the two most critical features um, that led, that had the most impact on the performance and the prediction um, power of this model. The next section is the parameter section, which are all the parameters that were taken by this trial within the autopilot experiment. This trial took these algorithms, took, um, number of bag sets as one. It took a good quality autogluon model and it took auto stacking as true, which means stacking was enabled for this. You can download the feature report in PDF format, raw data or a not notebook format. Let's now go ahead and check the performance section of this uh, experiment for this model. The performance section contains the metric ta matrices table, which has your objective matrices on your validation data set. It also has a confusion matrix. Now, this confusion matrix is commonly used to understand 
how the model labels are divided among the predicted and the true classes. In this case, the diagonal elements show that the number of correctly predicted labels, they show the number of predictive, uh, corrected, predict, correctly predicted labels, and the off diagonal elements show the misclassified records. And a confusion matrix is particularly useful for analyzing misclassifications due to false positives and false negatives. Next, we see a precision recall curve. And a precision recall curve interprets the labels as probability thresholds and shows the trade-offs that occur at various problem probability thresholds for precision and recall. And the last curve that we see out here is a receiver operating characteristic uh, curve. And this curve shows us the relationship between true positive rate and the false positive rates over a variety of potential probability thresholds. Let's review the artifact section. The artifact session for this ensemble uh, model has the input data, the shuffle training and validation splits, and your model artifacts. The explainability artifacts are in this location, which essentially comprises of everything that you saw here in the explainability section, the feature importance uh, data, um, as well as your metric data. So let's take a look. This is the same ensemble um, uh, experiment. So let's take a look as, as to what is the difference between the best model and say the third best model or the third best model. Yeah, the third best model. So let's open the model details out here. We will see that the first and foremost difference is that this trial ran with a smaller set of algorithms as compared to the trial that was that, that created the best model. We also see out here that, um, well, the, well, here we see that the auto stacking was still true, and we see that the back parameters and other parameters were still true, but the only difference that we see in terms of um, the configuration for this trial versus the other with the best one was the, uh, the set of algorithms that were chosen in this trial. So autopilot, what it did does is it automatically determines what are the selection, what are the set of algorithms that it should choose in the ensemble mode that it should choose for each trial. Um, each trial comprises of, for, for ensemble method, each trial comprises of a set of algorithms and a set of parameters um, for, for, from autogluon. Um, these parameters are, contain attributes regarding the model's quality, um, so good or high, the stacking levels, the number of bags. Um, okay. With that, let's now go ahead and review the, um, the hyperparameter optimization experiment and see what the difference is. Now, this is an example of a hyper uh, HPO mode um, experiment, an autopilot experiment that was trained with HPO mode. You see that this experiment, obviously, because it was an HPO mode experiment, is not does not have weighted ensembles. It comprises of trials. It, 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 we ran this experiment with uh, the default um, tr uh, 100 trials that HPO offers. We could have dialed it up and down, but we went ahead with 100. And if you see that HPO mode um, actually currently offers only three algorithms. It offers XGBoost, Linear Learner, and MLP. Uh, and the best model, as you can see, was trained with the XGBoost uh, algorithm. If we were to compare the two experiments, uh, one with HPO and the ensemble, then the F1 binary objective metric out here is a 0.648, and the one with an ensemble experiment was actually slightly better than that. It is a 0.673. Let's go ahead and take a look into the HPO models. Uh, details. I'm just going to close this out here real quick. And we're going to review the HPO model's best model. In terms of feature importance, we also see that HPO determined thought that duration and the URI BOR 3M were the best uh, features that 
attributed to the prediction um, the, that basically uh, contributed to um, the model's performance. Whereas the ensemble mode thought that it was the employment variation rate and the duration. In terms of um, hyperparameters, given that this is a hyperparameter tuning job that we ran, uh, we trained this model with an HPO mode. This does not have um, the autogluon parameters as we saw earlier. This actually uses a range of hyperparameters. Um, and so every trial uses a different range of hyperparameters, and we can see them here. Let's also take a look into the data exploration notebook. I'm just going to open one of the data exploration notebooks from one of the experiments. Uh, so let's just open the HPO mode one to give an insight into what the data exploration notebook looks like. The data exploration notebook essentially provides you insights about your data set that you uploaded. It gives you a summary of all your number of rows and columns, whether you had duplicate rows or not, whether you had missing target values or not, and whether they were invalid target values or not, and detects your problem type. Uh, if you remember, we did not specify the problem type when we were launching our autopilot experiment. Autopilot automatically determined that this was a binary classification problem. Then it contains details about the target analysis, wherein it explains you the distribution of your target columns. Um, the target column was Y, which is the fraud claim, whether it is um, a fraud or not, a yes or a no value. It gives you a data sample out here and gives you a feature summary. It also finds out whether you have duplicate rows or not, and then gives you a correlation analysis. This is a Pearson correlation that it performs between the columns of your data set. Also finds out if you had anomalous rows uh, in your data set or not, and finds out the missing values and the cardinality of your uh, features. Next, let's review what a candidate generation notebook looks like in the HPO mode. Uh, please note that ensemble mode does not have a candidate generation notebook, um, but let's review what the candidate generation notebook looks like for HPO mode. So a candidate generation notebook essentially tells you what was the workflow that autopilot in HPO mode took to create its uh, to create the experiment. The first few sections are purely the SageMaker setup, wherein it is setting up the environment, it downloads the corresponding libraries, and gets you ready. Uh, if you were to run this notebook, it essentially provides you a mechanism to run this notebook, and therefore it provides you all the commands and the instructions for, for setup. So we're going to skip through this. And let's review the candidates that were generated by Autopilot in, uh, in HPO mode. If you see out here, after analyzing your data set, it actually generated 10 machine learning pipelines and it uses three algorithms. And each pipeline contains a set of feature transformers and the algorithm. The first pipeline here is DPP0 XGBoost, which, uh, which means it uses used the XGBoost algorithm. And the data transformations it used was a robust imputer, a threshold one hot encoder, a data date time vectorizer. It actually tells you what were the feature transformations as well as the pre-processing steps that it performed. And it provides you uh, the code uh, after you've selected the candidate to run the corresponding um, to, to run this corresponding code if you were to generate this candidate by yourself um, separately in a notebook, you could do that. Uh, it, it tells you how it actually went ahead and executed that. Similarly, it tells you various other candidates. This one is DPP0 XGBoost. This is DPP1, which uses a different set of um, data processing uh, features, uh, data processing features, and um, data processors. And um, a, well, in this case, a similar um, algorithm. The third um, candidate, if you see out here, uses um, 
these feature transformers and data processors and a linear learner algorithm. So you can essentially see all the pipelines that Autopilot created um, and then has a run, and, and it also spits out the, uh, the runnable code out here so you can take it and run it. The next section is the section which is so the first section, the previous section was about the candidates that were generated and how you select the can, how the select candidates were selected. And the next section comprises of um, the parameters that were chosen by Autopilot for this HPO job. And it gives you a list of the statistic parameter, the static parameters uh, for all the algorithms, the XGBoost, Linear Learner, and MLP. If you see, it comprises of the ranges out here. And these are the ranges that it took for these parameters. And it will run these trials with these ranges of hyperparameters. Um, and each trial will comprise of the algorithm, the, the data processing uh, processors that were selected automatically by autopilot and a range of hyperparameters that you see out here. So each trial will essentially pick up these parameters and run individually and parallelly for you, uh, thereby making sure that multiple iterations have happened, thereby taking the heavy lifting of the multiple uh, iterations that go into building a machine learning process, a machine learning model. Now let's go ahead and see the endpoint that we had deployed. We had auto deployed our, um, we had auto deployed our experiment. So let's go ahead and check the endpoint and let's go ahead and invoke it. Let's first go ahead and describe our endpoint. This is the endpoint that it automatically created once the autopilot experiment um, ended. This is used for real time inferencing. The model that is attached to it is described below. Let's go ahead and see how do we invoke this endpoint uh, that was auto deployed for us. So I've defined the endpoint name out here and uh, essentially taken the same endpoint that was auto deployed. Uh, I'm going ahead and initiating a SageMaker runtime client and I'm passing a test data, which this is my payload that I want to send to my endpoint. Um, which essentially comprises of all the columns except for the target column. And I want to see whether, um, what is what is it that it predicts uh, in real time? So all I'm doing is uh, calling the invoke um, endpoint API, uh, passing it the endpoint name, telling it that the uh, content type is text and CSV, and then I'm printing out the response of um, of the invocation. So I see that the, for this particular payload, my response was no, that it's not a fraudulent claim and then the probability label with it. That the probability of this response being accurate is around 0.88. With that, let's go ahead and switch back into our um, presentation. That wraps up our demo. Uh, we would highly recommend uh, some of these blogs um, to get started with Autopilot. The first blog talks about Autopilot uh, training modes. Um, it talks about the ensemble training mode that has been recently launched, uh, which is powered by Autogluon. And it also talks about the integration of Data Wrangler with Autopilot. This concludes our um, presentation. Thank you.